Did you know that holiday shopping is expected to drop 34% this year? That's close to a $100 billion decrease from last holiday season. That's a significant concern for many mom and pop stores across the country. However, here's the twist. 82% of small business owners are still anticipating the same, if not even more revenue compared to last year. In today's segment, we'll explore the key trends impacting small businesses from employment shifts to essential financing agreements that could be game changers for your company as well. Stay tuned as we break down the numbers that matter. A recent survey by Intuit QuickBooks reveals some concerning trends for this holiday season. According to their findings, consumer holiday spending is projected to drop by a staggering 34%, translating to an estimated $85 billion less compared to last year's. What's driving the decrease? Among those who plan to cut back on holiday spending, 60% cite rising grocery and gas prices as the primary reason. Additionally, 40% of respondents feel that their wages haven't kept pace with inflation over the past year. However, it's not bleak for all small businesses. An impressive 82% of small business owners expect their holiday revenues to remain steady or even increase compared to last year. Still, it's important to note that 23% of small business owners mentioned that a slow holiday season would create a lot of problems in the upcoming year, with even 5% saying that a slower holiday season would force them to shut down the business. Turning to the broader economic landscape, September's report from Intuit QuickBooks, which surveyed 333,000 small businesses with one to nine employees, paints a mixed picture. As you can see here on the screen, the data shows that real monthly income declined in 8 of 12 tracked industry sectors. The largest drop that you can see there in the dark red occurred in education and health services. Overall, real monthly revenue for small businesses in this employee category stood at $51,700. Out of the 20 states that were tracked, 13 experienced a drop in revenue with Wisconsin showing the largest monthly increase at 0.54% that you can see here at the top of the screen in the dark green, while California faced the biggest decrease at 0.3% that you can see here in kind of the crimson color, magenta color. So California was the uh, biggest decrease month over month there. Employment within U.S. small businesses has also taken a huge hit with the loss of 4,800 jobs primarily in manufacturing and leisure and hospitality sectors. As you can see here on the screen, manufacturing lost 1,100 jobs and leisure and hospitality lost 1,300 jobs. Again, this is small businesses with one to nine employees. So we're looking at September numbers here and it goes month over month. So I would assume leisure and hospitality has to do with the summer months where once you get into the fall, a lot of that leisure and hospitality companies they're not as busy in the fall as compared to the summer i'm not sure about manufacturing and then with utilities was the greatest jump with 200 added jobs that's 0.37 percent increase and now moving on to a survey by paychecks a nationwide payroll provider for small to mid-sized businesses here's a report that they've done focusing on employers with fewer than 50 employees highlighting modest employment growth throughout the year and in september hourly earnings grew by 3%, yet the three-month annualized growth has been below 3% for the past five months. So again, it's probably not keeping up with inflation. But another interesting fact that we can look at here on the screen is that the small business wage data, the hourly earnings for uh, these companies with fewer than 50 employees is an average of $32.70 an hour. So that's roughly if you're working 40 hours a week, it's roughly you know, $64,000 a year. Also found in this report that you can see here on the screen, it's under job index and wage data highlights. I think it's the fourth bullet there, but it says employers continue to struggle to find workers, but the Midwest remains the top region for small business growth for the fourth consecutive month, with Indiana leading as the top state for job growth for the third straight month. So some of this data you have to keep in mind, paychecks, I'm not sure where their clients are nationwide. Maybe they just have a really strong presence in the Midwest and that's why they see this growth in the Midwest where they see more uh, businesses using their payroll. But again, I'm not sure, maybe they just have a very balanced clientele nationwide. 
Now let's shift gears to some significant financing agreements in the market. Jay Palmer Collective, an asset-based lender, recently completed a $72 million capital raise at aimed at accelerating growth and funding new clients focusing on high growth, women-led and natural product companies. In other financing news, Celtic Bank has funded a components manufacturer with a total of $4.4 million, which includes $3.25 million in accounts receivable and in inventory lines of credit alongside loans for equipment and capital expenditures. Additionally, Lease Point Funding Group and Equipment Finance Lender secured a $40 million line of credit facility to be able to help more of their customer contributing to their impressive $180 million in equipment financing since 2016. Midcap Business Credit also made headlines by funding a $7.5 million asset-based loan to a food importer and distributor while low funds nearly lent $10 million in term loans during Q3 of 2024 to assist companies that don't meet traditional bank standards. To sum it up for today, while consumers are tightening their belts this holiday season, small business owners seem to hold a more optimistic outlook. As always, staying informed about these trends and financing opportunities can be crucial for your business's success. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Do not forget to like the video, subscribe for more small business financing insights.